Airsoft GI would like to thank our sponsors. Andrew, could you imagine M240 or M60.4? Yes, that's going to hurt a lot. Yes. Uh, Tim is at a birthday party because it's his birthday today, so if you guys can just spam his Facebook wall or call his phone um, to you know, spam his phone mailbox to wish him happy birthday, that would be awesome. Uh, Bob will be coming in shortly. And my thought of Polar Star, I'm not a really big fan of Polar Stars, um, those engines. Um, yeah. But they are cool, very powerful, very easy to play with. All right. And there is Bob. Yes. My show starts at six. All right. I'll so. be your common thing guy today. Okie dokie. I think Josh is on here somewhere. Yes, he's on here. Excellent. Well, we got a fair amount of stuff to talk about. Uh, actually, a cool new little. Chris test, Chris contest going on. Uh, first of all, I'm going to mention our Chris giveaway. If you haven't already noticed, uh, there's actually. Sorry, Actually, I'll, I'll put mine on silent too. I don't know where my phone is. In silent. Good lord. There we go. Okay, so we are having a KWA Chris giveaway. If Tim hasn't already said it before, the Chris is in stock. Um, how many do we have? I, I don't know exactly how many, but it's in stock. Uh, but that said, we have uh, we have a feed on our main page uh, on Facebook, Airsoft GI on Facebook, uh, going on right now. It started, I believe, yesterday at 5 p.m. Um, now that that Facebook uh, post is going to go from from then until this Friday at 5 p.m. Now, if we reach a certain threshold, we are going to be giving away a KWA Chris. I may not have the Saturn here, but you'll be getting everything else. So get on it. So get on it now. How? The threshold that we have we have to reach to give away this KWA Chris is basically a thousand likes on our main page on Airsoft GI. So we need to get up to two hundred seventy six thousand and seven hundred twenty one likes. Jesus, Andrew. Sorry, that's my Haley bottle. Okay, so uh, if you're interested in winning Chris, make sure to go to our Facebook page. Make sure to get all of your friends, relatives, and any other subsidiary contacts you have to go to our main Facebook page and like our main Facebook page, Airsoft GI on Facebook. So if we get a thousand more likes, uh, that, that takes care of one portion of giving away this KWA Chris. So we have to get up to 276,721 likes. Now we have to get a thousand shares on this specific thread. So you know when you check out this thread, make sure to share it, get all your friends to share it, get anyone you know to share this thread. And then even more than that, we have to get 5,000 likes on this thread. So just to reiterate, a thousand likes on the main page, a thousand shares on this thread regarding the KWA Chris, which is this thread is already up on our main page on Facebook, and five thousand likes on that thread. So again, make sure to like the main page, make sure to like the thread, and make sure to share the thread. Um, and yes, that will be going if we reach that threshold by Friday, uh, May tenth, by five p.m. We will be giving away this bad boy, and it's going to be probably one of the most rare guns in airsoft. Probably shouldn't drop the mag right on your phone. Um, Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. I've screwed up phones before. Now, uh, an additional thing we're asking you to do, you don't have to do it, but we just kind of like to know from our, you know, we, we like to hear back from our customers a lot. We're not the customer service department, but, you know, we would like to hear back we from you guys. We do care about you guys. We care a lot. I, I care a lot. I know Andrew cares a lot. Hell, everyone in the market probably cares a lot. I care more than you do. You win, Bob. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you know, if you have me on that thread, you know, liking and sharing and liking our main page, uh, maybe pick a product from our Airsoft GI inventory on our website and just post it in that thread. Just tell us, we just kind of want to know what your favorite product on our website is. It'll just help us, you know, if we're ordering new products or, you know, if we're deciding on what to do a spotlight on. Um, you know, we just, we want to know what you guys want so we can deliver it a lot better. That's all. Um, but yeah, so that has to do with our KWA Chris giveaway. I'm going to be mentioning this further on in our broadcast, but we've got a lot of new products to talk to you about today, but I think there's something really special that we can finally tell you guys about that we keep getting asked about, which is, do you want to guess? We are awesome? That's not a question, that's a statement. Oh, I don't know. Well, I guess you did say it like a question. All right, I'm just gonna move on. We actually finally got- Oh, the painting! Some guns painted! This is awesome! God, this is cool. Um, is the arrow one? I believe this is AR-01. I mean, I could be incorrect on that one. I'm basically just going with it because you just said it right now. Um, it's not 
a an incredibly affordable process. From my original estimate, you know, I would be willing to pay from fifty to seventy five bucks for this. But because you know this is an incredibly labor intensive process, and this camo that they use on this gun, um, what did they say? Is like Duracoat or is it actual real firearm coating? Uh, I have no information on this. Okay, well, when I heard the guy talking, he mentioned that this is like the same coating they use on real firearms. So uh, a lot of care goes into this. I mean, you can't. There are actually really no mold mm. lines you can see from the paper, which is really, or from the hydro dipping, which is which is cool. So we got one done in AOR1. Uh, we got one done, uh, I believe, multicam. Yeah. Then we got another one done in ATAX. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, the ATAX one looks awesome. Multicam one looks awesome. I'm not a big fan of AOR1 on guns, but I still think this looks awesome. So for all of you out there that keep asking us, when are we going to get our get our gun bait? Oh my God. Get our gun painting taken care of. We're on it. We're working hard to get you the best product and the best services we possibly can. Um, so, yeah, this this is definitely probably going to run over uh, the $100 mark, probably in the $150, 175 But it's worth it. It is worth it. I mean, if you want to really trick your gun, look different on uh, the field. Hydro Dip Duracoat. Hydro Dip Duracoat. Thank yes. you, whoever that was. I can't see. Uh, Josh. That was Joe. Okay, very well played, Josh. Um, so, yeah, I mean, these rifles look amazing. I really want to get... I want four hydro dip. I'm just not really sure. I mean, I'm tempted to do like full GTAX or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about it. But for those of you out there that keep asking us, we're hard to work on this and really excited we got this done because hopefully we'll have many more of these to come. So I will say it does take some time in addition to costing uh, uh, a little bit more money because they do have to take some like a day or two or three to set. Mm -hmm. uh, you know it. Bob, you're done. Just face it. What does that mean? I have no idea what he means. What is, what is hydro dipping? Hydro dipping is a process of painting, and Be, that's the most I know. Right? Basically, they'll have a, a sheet of uh, you know camo or a film of camo in there, and they basically dip the entire gun in it, and uh, it takes a while for. I believe they said it actually has to sit in a certain temperature of water for an entire day. Wow, that's just the first day. That's how that's how the pro does it. That's all you need to know. Oh, these are the two same chat. Same chat, yeah. This is actually a program that broadcasting this is what they actually see oh, okay yeah well thank you tyler fields i had a great time in elite ops that slide is really fun <laughs> i hope uh, we get that footage back very soon um but yeah that was that was awesome um but that said <clears throat> you know if you guys are interested in all in uh, these paint jobs um you know make sure to like say something about that on our facebook but if you are on our facebook make sure also to head over to that chris thread um now andrew what uh, i'm curious about your thoughts on the chris um, because, you know, you're interested in uh, weapons that are possibly being used by police departments, and, you know, there are a couple departments that have picked this up, mm -hmm. but the vast majority still use MP5s because of the more affordable ammunition and the controllability of the MP5s. Um, let me ask you this, uh, Bob. How, what do you f uh, how did you feel after shooting the cruiser in Vegas? Uh, I thought it was really cool. The two-shot burst was just as awesome as on the Airsoft, Chris. The only thing I was surprised about is that on full auto, it, you know, it was hard to control by the fifth it round. Is. It's not yeah. like, you know, some super weapon that you have no recoil on. But, you know, on semi and double tap, you know, it's incredibly controllable. On mm -hmm. full auto, again, like, you know, after you the You have to fight it. Yeah. Just like other, you really got to lean into so. it, push forward. And, I mean, if you're not ready for it, the fifth shots, it makes it an anti-aircraft weapon. So. Exactly. So, um, I like, uh, like, I think this gun is going to have a future in law enforcement, definitely. But it's just one thing that hinder it, hinders it is the, uh, the cost of it. Uh, the cost of the gun and the cost of the rounds. Exactly. So uh, I've shot the MP5. I can hold it. I can do a full auto on that thing mm -hmm. uh, within a circle that's this big. Yeah. So I mean, I couldn't. I'm sure somebody can do that with a Chris, but MP5 is more controllable. But at the same time, Chris do have the knockdown power. Andrew's. Yeah, Andrew's talking about the real yeah. steel version right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, that is that is it's you know give and take. Like it does have knockdown power of the 45, but at the same time it's not as controllable in full exactly, auto. Yeah. And the rounds are vastly more expensive compared to nine millimeter rounds. But but that said, I mean the gas pullback version of this. Oh man, the gas pullback version is probably one of the best. Some machine gun I've ever yeah uh, it's play with. it's really yeah. fun I mean I like my MP9 I if I had the opportunity I'd switch it out for Chris but but uh, I don't um, <laughs> it's a really cool gun I wish I could just buy it and a lot of other things to go with it but yeah. we are giving one away just make sure you get on that Facebook thread and get, right now yeah right now get all of your friends on it and yeah we'll be giving one away if that happens can employee uh, employee qualify for that. Uh, to win this? Yes. Don't think so. Damn. I actually asked about we had a we had a like 
our mystery boxes are really great anyway, but we had a couple around here that were just far and away like such in a more amazing deal. Like we had the amazing mystery box, mm -hmm. the Death Star mystery box, uh, the ones with the big popper tickets, um, and the minigun mystery box. I even asked him when the minigun mystery box came down. I was like, hey, really want a minigun, Tim, and I'm willing to gamble. Can I buy a mystery box? He's like, yeah, you, your relatives can buy one for you. But not you. But not me. Okay. So, so yeah, you know, if, if you want to get on that, have your mom purchase a mystery box. Or my, my brother. Your brother. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, with another bike. Um, do, 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 do. I, it's funny. I keep looking over the other one to find different comments, but it's the same one. Um, Bob, thoughts on the FAMAS? Uh, I haven't seen someone using a FAMAS in Airsoft for a long time. Uh, I've seen I mean, they're French. Yeah, it's a French gun. That's probably why. Okay. Just kidding. Uh, well, they came, they actually, they came out a long time ago, and I thought there were some, like, technical issues when they first came out, just, you know. There's some unique, that is some unique gun right there. Oh, no, it's a very, it's a very unique gun. Um, I've got a lot of, a lot of respect for the French Foreign Legion, but uh, I will say that, um, you know, as far as the airsoft version, I remember when it first came out, there were a lot of issues, like, uh, some of the parts, like, were proprietary. I mean, I could be wrong on that, but. I really don't have a more. I don't have very much experience with it uh, in its current iteration in the airsoft world because I haven't seen too many people use it, and I don't currently own one. Mm. So, but nope. cool looking gun. Yeah, it is. It is. But you know what I like? The Tavor. Yeah. Oh man, the Tavor was sweet. Do you remember when they had a, that Israeli guy shows how yes. to like shoot and reload it really quick? He's uh, he's he, he's legit. Yeah, no, that was that was pretty solid. Legit. They flew all the way out from Israel to go to that show, and yeah. uh, they were very nice and let us fire their Tavors. <laughs> Including the CQB version, which is really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, that was really shortened down. And I just found out on, on YouTube that Travis Haley finally got his hand on one and fired it. Oh man, he he's, he's smooth when he did the reload. Oh yeah? It's faster than the Israeli guy, I can, I can say. Well, I would assume so. Yeah. Um, does the majority of GI crew shoot real steel? Um, I do. I do too. I grew up shooting uh, shotguns when I was 10 years old, so. I grew up in Hong Kong, so I didn't get too far no. on steel like I was. <laughs> At least 21. seven. Okay. Twenty-one. Uh, I would say the the majority of the marketing team shoots real steel. Yeah. Yeah. With with like one or two exceptions. Uh, Bob or Andrew, I have a question. Go. Go ahead. Um, who who asked the question? Uh, Alan something or other. I didn't see it before it disappeared. Uh, too late. You Alan Alan two oh five. <laughs> well, he'll ask a question soon enough, and hopefully we'll see it. So many questions. He is watching the, or someone is watching the Travis Haley video right now. It's yeah. awesome. All right, well, while we wait for Alan to come back to this question, um, in addition to hydro dipping guns, in addition to the KWA giveaway, we've actually got a new set of rails here. Um, now, <laughs> Josh is actually really excited about this, this, I believe, as is Mark. And correct me if I'm wrong, Josh. Um, but these are really cool because these are supposedly one of the newest and most lightweight rails in airsoft and as well as the real real shooting industry, real steel shooting industry. Uh, now these are not meant for real, the ones that we carry are not meant for real steel farms. These are meant of course. These are meant for airsoft guns, but I gotta say this is ridiculously light. Now this oh, is man. the Noveski NSR, we've got them at a variety of lengths. Uh, it's a really cool looking setup, I mean there's a lot of, what? The ring is actually with the rail, I think. Okay. So you just screw the rail on, yeah. instead of just Having the barrel nut it, yeah. and then go. Oh, that's smart design. Pretty solid, huh? Yeah. yeah. So, really cool. We have them in a variety of lengths. I believe four different lengths. So, if you guys are looking for a new rail, a Noveski NSR rail, this is probably what you want to get. Um, this is pretty cool. I mean, I I feel really stupid saying this, but I like it just for the looks. I like it. I'll run, I, I, I would run that on an airsoft gun, but I wouldn't run that on, on an AR-15. Why? This thing is so skinny mm -hmm. that the heat from your gas tube and barrel. Oh, you'll get like three magazines downrange, and you'll be like, ah, I can't. You have to wear gloves. Yeah, so. that would be unfortunate. But for airsoft, this is a great, very functional. Yeah. Josh has been really into lightweight, uh, lightweight um, rail systems, and this is even lighter than the one he has, I believe. Uh, so he's probably a little bit jealous right now. Did we see Alan's question? I didn't see. Alan, if you got a question, just go for it. Uh, yes, Team Balahack, Josh is correct. We cannot sell EOTEX. It is against the law. Uh, 
Under two fifty dollars for the longest. Bob, what is the longest lasting AG under two hundred fifty dollars? Um, I would say that's really subjective because, like, I mean, they're they're AGs that will last a long time based on you know how you treat it or what you do to it. Um, you know, it, it it depends on what you're planning on doing to it. If it's right out of the box, hmm. CQR. That's probably one of the good ones. Uh, in, yeah, the, uh, I mean, the Way CQR mod, was it mod zero or mod one? Both of them. Both of them are pretty good. I would say the FMG fours are pretty good. They're um, they're over 250, though. Oh, are they? I thought, like, with the coupon codes, it drops. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Used to yeah, yeah, code. with the coupon codes, they'll drop our FMG fours under the 250 threshold, hopefully. Maybe not for all of them. Uh, but those last very long. Uh, they're very well engineered. Lonex has great quality internals. Uh, it's also a metal body, so that's you're coming up on that. Upper body. Yeah. For the you're talking CQR. Right? No, I'm talking. Oh, oh, I'm talking FMG fours. Sorry, yeah, they're full metal bodies. Good recovery. The CQRs yes. are made out of polymer, though. Uh, only the bottom receiver. Okay, yeah, the the oh, bottom receiver is made out of polymer. Oh shit. Did uh, you guys know that Happy Birthday? That song, like Happy Birthday, to you, that song is owned by Michael Jackson, and that's why a lot of restaurants don't sing that because they don't want to pay him. That's absurd, and I don't think that's true. You don't think that's true? Well, it's possible, you know, he owns it, but I don't think restaurants... Like, are... he literally paid for the, like, the copyright. Damn. I'm tr well, he bought a lot of stuff before yeah. uh, before he passed away. He even bought, like, the rights to the entire Beatles collection. And that that's... pissed... It really pissed off his buddy, um... Something McCartney. Shit, I feel so stupid. Who's the Beatle that's alive and really well-known? Uh, John Lennon? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have no idea, no. sorry. Well, anyway, it, uh, he definitely bought up anything and everything he could. Um, but that said, I wish I, I wish I could have found Alan's question. Oh, there he is. Where is it? Where can I find a small backpack? Oh, Josh already answered it a while back. We actually have a variety of backpacks on airsoftgi.com. If you're looking for a small one, I actually just reviewed, uh, the video hasn't gone live yet because we may have to reshoot it, uh, this pack called the DEFCON War Pack. And it's actually a go bag style bag. It's really cool. It has like an absurd amount of pockets. And even has a hidden compartment where if you unzip it, you can extend the bag by further, I think like six to eight inches. Uh, very everyone, long. Everyone wants an extra six to eight inches. Paul McCartney, thank you. I feel so stupid. So stupid. Andrew thought of the Daniel Defense Omega Rail. I think they're nice. Uh, they're two piece, if I remember correctly. Uh, you don't have to replace your delta ring or the barrel nut. But I'll prefer the Daniel Defense Light Rail as I'm running one on my AR right now. So. Hmm. Um, question, when will uh, GI sell a custom DSG? Um, well, you know, that's something I'll take to our tech tomorrow, and I'll see uh, what they think about uh, doing some dual sector gear. I assume that's what you mean. Um, yeah, okay, thank you, Josh. Yeah, we do sell custom DSGs. Um, I was going to say, that would be absurd for us to neglect that. So uh, check out our site. Um, I don't know if they're uh, labeled custom DSG, but you can uh, type in dual sector gear or just go through our custom guns, and that should be listed on the build order if you look at our custom guns. Um, Somebody love you, Bob. Oh, I love you too, buddy. Thanks. A small molly backpack that attaches to the back of a vest. Yes, oh, that's, I'm glad you <laughs> reiterated his question, Jason Kwan. Um, there are some small molly backpacks that attach uh, to the back of vests, um, I believe. I believe Pantac and Condor, and I could be wrong on this, Pantac and Condor both came out with hydration packs uh, that can be mollied to the back of your vest. And at the same time, they actually look really cool. Um, so yeah, check out, uh, go to airsoftgi.com, type in Pantac or Condor hydration carrier or backpack, and you should be able to find it. Um, I'm trying to think of a way to describe it, but uh, I know it does have, you know, molly attachment capability, but it does also have some Velcro real estate uh, on the back for morale patches or name strips. So. Um, yeah, check it out. I wish I could put down a link to it right now, but it's, it's a really cool pack, and I think that's what you're looking for. And it's not incredibly huge. Um, I wish you could think of it, because I don't, I don't know if it's just Condor Hydration Care. I feel like it might be something else. Yeah, I hope Alan gets that answer, too. I hope he's still watching. Bob, I'm your father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate. <laughs> I believe that's from Spaceballs. <laughs> I think Darth Helmet says that. What is a slim plate carrier or chest rig? Blue Force gear. Yes. Oh we my just gosh, that is unbelievable lightweight. It, the was it the plate carrier minus? Uh, plate minus. Plate yes. minus. Uh, but Blue Force gear. We just got some of those in. That is probably the most low profile and most lightweight plate carrier 
you are ever going to find. Oh, except for the cry position one, but you know, it's pretty damn close. Really? Yeah. Cry position, uh, jumpable plate carrier, and that thing is just hold your plate, that's it. it. Isn't that what the plate minus is? Uh, it's, it's almost like that. I, they use less material on the jumpable. You're kidding. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not kidding. I would love to see that because Didn't I was... Did you wear Jason's? No. You wore that plate, remember? Uh-uh. No, no. I was like, hey, Bob, this plate is probably all the same way as the one you bought. And then you put on the plate carrier. That was Jason's. No recollection of that. Damn. Sorry, um, buddy. Okay, well... I'll, put, I'll, I'll assume it happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, wow, that, it's shocking, though, because, um, uh, you know... When I put that plate minus on, I was like, man, I don't think, like, I don't know. I just don't know how they could get any less fabric on there and still have it attached to your body. Exactly. So, very well played. And the material they use is pretty strong, too. So Yeah. Um, but as far as, you know, low-profile stuff, in addition to the plate minus, we also have um, the uh, Shellback Tactical Banshee Rifle Plate Carrier. Oh, man, that it, thing is a boss. Yeah, it's not the lightest weight thing you're going to get, um, but it is really high-speed, low-drag. Like, it's very close to your person. Andrew's Rock One, I believe Mark has one? No, Mark wants me wants me to sell him mine. Okay. Well, I saw Mark Rock One. He liked it a lot. Um, it's a pretty cool setup. Uh, we actually, we just got another shipping in because our last shipment just went right out the door. So. Yeah. Hurry up if you want one. So. <sighs> Good blowback pistol under 350. Uh, KWA, anything is under 350. KWA, what? ATP series. What? Are, what? what? Uh, this gentleman right here, I think I assume this gentleman, uh, Garrett Myers. Do you know any good blowback pistols for under three fifty? Yeah, I mean your answer was yeah. more or less correct. ATP series. Most blowback pistols, you know, that people use in the airsoft world today are under three fifty. Uh, excuse me. You are going to find, you know, custom pistols out there for vastly quite a bit more money. Um, but I would suggest, you know, just getting like if you want to. My personal choice would be, a, like Andrew said, a KWA PTP series. That's a professional training pistol. Uh, you know, a KWA 1911 PTP. They have Mark One all the way through Mark Four. It's basically the same pistol, just different exterior design. The Mark One doesn't have rails. Um, I don't know the difference between the Mark Two, Threes, and Fours. Um, but also another idea or another option is the uh, Elite Force 1911. Uh, it's a really cool pistol. Runs out 12 gram CO2, so you're gonna be able to find that more readily. It'll operate in slightly colder temperatures. Oh, 350 FPS. Oh, 350 FPS. Uh, oh, that makes yeah. Sense. Stick with the PTP. Yeah, because the Elite Force may or may not be over 350 FPS per second. I'm sure, it's over. Yeah, three yeah. Four. Well, no, it's not over four because I've used it at uh, some outdoor ranges. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but they they just they kick so much, which is why I like them so much. Um, so yeah, KWA PTP series. There's also if you want to uh, KJW, um, but I I prefer the KWA series. I love you too, LA Clerk. L so so yeah, if you are looking for a pistol under 350 feet per second, uh, I would highly suggest the KWA series. <laughs> uh, do 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 do. Do you guys plan on carrying the VM4? I don't think so. The VM4. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, I don't think we have any on our website currently, and I haven't, I haven't heard anything come down the pipe, but I'm, I generally don't hear a lot of things way ahead of time, so who knows? Could a GPB AUG be done, and when? who do you think would come up with it? Well, an AUG is not really a popular um, weapon system among the um, United States. Um, they are, they are a cool design, but... Yeah, I'm, basically what Andrew's saying is we uh, there's probably not as much of a market for it as people would hope. I know that when the original AUGs came out, the one with the rail setup just didn't sell very well because it was really front-heavy. The A3, right? Or yeah, I think so. Um, it's a cool-looking gun. Someone was asking how the cheek weld is on my face mask. I feel like there's some sort of something that someone may have done to it that I don't know about. So let me know why you're asking about the cheek weld on my face mask. I'm kind of curious. Um, uh, Bob, can I ask you a serious question? Uh, I'll try and give you a serious answer, but no promises. Let's see. Oh, yeah, actually, you know, now that we mention it, since uh, you guys were asking about, you know, high-speed, low-drag gear. Yeah. What? The kangaroo is right there. Oh, okay. I need it. Um, this is the Shellback Tactical Banshee Play Carrier. Uh, it's very low profile. Um, it's very close to the body, obviously. Um, but it's also a very solid vest. Um, now, uh, Shellbag actually also makes a variety of products that go with this. Uh, probably my favorite, which is uh, something I did an article on, thank you, Andrew, 
are these kangaroo couches. Now, this is really cool because in this uh, Banshee Rifle Play Care, they actually added in a pouch in front here that is just filled with Velcro. Now you can put, um, you know, obviously you can put things in there already because there's Velcro, you can just push back together and hold it. Uh, but if you want to add extra magazine space, like at two extra magazine slots, you can put this in this pouch on the inside. That's why they call it a kangaroo pouch. And there's also other additional pockets uh, that if you don't use this, if you want to have a zipper pocket, you can buy the zipper kangaroo pouch and put that in there. So you just zip it open, put your stuff in, zip it closed. Um, these are really cool. I think it's it's an awesome idea that they designed this vest with this in mind. And also, you know, you don't have to add it. So you can cut down the weight by taking this out. Uh, I know you, you I have one. You have one of these, and uh, I believe these are rated for use by the LAPD, right? Uh, the black one is. The black uh, one? Yeah. What, what is that? Oh, because cops. Yeah. Cops, yeah. yeah. They can wear fancy color. Right? Yeah. But uh, you, how you set this up is you have three three magazine pouches on mm -hmm. the front, right? And then I have two in the kangaroo pouch right there. So you do a kangaroo pouch. Yes. Okay, but so you're. Not, not by shop, because back then they. I, I couldn't find these ones. Oh, okay, because yeah. this, this is a new uh, piece of gear. Um, so you carry five mags on the front. And then three on my battle belt. Okay, three on your belt. So you'd have eight mags. Uh, um, worst case, I have three more on my side, but it's underneath my cummerbund. Okay. So, um, so you, I mean, you, know, you didn't have a whole lot on here, but you were effective, which mm -hmm. is good. Uh, I personally think this vest really fills out with, you know, uh, fake or real plates in here. Uh, I think without it, it just doesn't look as cool as it could. Mm -hmm. Personal Definitely. opinion. Uh, a lot of Velcro real estate on the front, a lot of Velcro real estate on the back, and the cool thing about uh, this Velcro real estate is that they're also molly, mm -hmm. which is really neat. And you can uh, have morale patches on there, or you can mount pouches on it. Yeah, so you know, if you guys are looking for a you know, plate carrier vest, and one that's rated to be used by one of the most well-respected uh, uh, police departments in the nation, this is your guy. This is the Shellback Tactical Banshee Plate, Banshee Rifle Plate Carrier. And one last thing I want to mention is that Shellback Tactical also makes these really cool shoulder pads. Now, uh, Josh got these for his Pantech RV, and they, I actually found out that they fit on my Spectre Plate Carrier. Um, I noticed after wearing a lot of gear on my Spectre Plate Carrier that the shoulder straps were digging into my body. So I'm definitely going to be purchasing some of these, the Shellback Tactical shoulder pads that come in sets of two. Um, Andrew recommended them. Uh, I should have purchased them when I had the chance because the ones I want are out of stock right now. So especially with you, because we have like eighty pounds. Oh, I know, don't, I know. Don't take a load I, off your shoulder. I really should have known better, but yeah, these are such a great accessory. I'm so happy they made those, and I'm so happy they work with play carriers other than just the banshee. Yeah. So that's a really nice feature. Um, so yeah, very well played, Shellback Tactical and Tactical Assault here. Really like their products. You could be watching us right now. Who? Mike from the Shellback. Well, I hope he is. He makes great. I'm, they make great products. I'm, I'm really happy we have their stuff. Yeah. So that's awesome. Okay, let's see if there is any questions we can answer. Is Spencer unavailable? I have some tech questions. Uh, he's possibly busy. Uh, the tech department's always hard at work on stuff, or he could be out. He's at the other building. Uh, so. He is at the other building. When will Tim and you, Bob, come back to Virginia and have a Tim vs. Bob game at Ballahack? Um, I don't know uh, if and when we'll be having another Tim vs. Bob game there. We are working on figuring out what we're going to do, uh, if we're going to do the next one. Um, I mean, I personally would love to come back to Virginia and airsoft at Ballahack. That's so they got people there. Yeah, God, everyone it's nice. The yeah. South seems so much more polite than out here on the like West Coast, or more specifically Southern California. Yep. Maybe it's the entertainment industry or something. Um, but uh, but yeah, I remember telling folks there at the, at the, at the East Coast store, and I was like, man, I wish I could stay for another day and go to Ballahack because that place is so damn. Cool. I've never been there. I want like after hearing the stories from you guys, I want to go there. Yeah, I I would That's consider sure. it's it's probably one of the best outdoor fields in the country. Yeah, yeah. Um, and did you see the table they set up? For Ballahack? Yeah. 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 They actually, that was the original table they had just drawings of the field, and it was to scale. And then they made a... They just glued a bunch of sh stuff on top of it. 3D model, Made right? models and all that, yeah. And the cool thing is they told me they were going to have plexiglass over it and they were going to grid it off so that okay. if you're planning your stuff, you'd be like, no, I want to phase line alpha, then I want uh, red team to move That's dedication right there. No, that's, that's real military tactics. Well, that too, but that's dedication. I mean, not many airsoft field does that. Um, so definitely, it's battle hack. Those mm. guys are taking it to the next level. Uh, someone was saying, what plates do you recommend? I don't know if they're asking us specifically. Specifically, but uh, why don't you tell them what plates that you and I purchased? Uh, we purchased the um, the AR500 uh, steel with the special coating that um, 
where we eliminate uh, what they call spotting and fragmentation. But if you have the money, go with the level four ceramic. Those things can take a beating. Any, any more questions? I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to lose. And they are delayed for two weeks. Who are who? The plates. Why? My friend is like, yeah, I got an email from them delayed for two weeks. Oh, shit, what do I got? Man. What do I got from UPS? Um, <laughs> I feel like there's there's more stuff here we're gonna mention, or I just go through it too quickly. That sniper rifle. Oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no I no information on that thing, so it's okay. Well, I'm just gonna spitball it. Oh, okay, well, might as well pull it out. Oh, actually, before this. I'm going to mention the Katie Wade Chris giveaway in case folks out here didn't hear. Um, okay, so in case you are just joining us now or just joined us recently, we are having a KWA Chris giveaway contest on our Facebook page. If you head over to our Facebook page, basically Airsoft GI, um, now we have a thread going on currently where it's, I believe it's a photo of a KWA Chris mentioning that we, we will be giving off, giving away this Chris if we reach a certain threshold. Now the threshold me is... We need 1,000 new likes on our Facebook page, which we mean we'd have to get up to 276,721 likes. So 1,000 likes on our Facebook page. We also need 1,000 shares of this specific thread about the Chris. Mm -hmm. We also need 5,000 likes on that thread. So to reiterate that, uh, to make sure that... <laughs> Make sure that this KWA Chris giveaway goes live. You're going to need to go into our main Facebook page, like the Facebook page, you're going to share the thread, and you're going to need to like the thread. And you, it would probably also be in your best interest to get every single person you know, friend, mom, relative, non-relative, to get on there and do the same thing. Um, now, you don't have to do this, but we would just be kind of curious to hear, um, you know, what your favorite product on airsoftgi.com is. So, you know, if you, are, if you are already on our Facebook page, liking the Facebook page, uh, liking the, the thread about the Chris and sharing the thread, um, you might as well just pick your favorite product on airsoftgi.com and just post it in the comments of that thread. Uh, we just kind of like to hear back from you guys and just kind of keep this going and be able to serve you guys better as a retailer. Mm-hmm. Wait. You're opening a store in New York? We are? That's news to me. That's a lot of questions and exclamation marks. Do, 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 do. Yeah, please don't spam in caps. Uh, Airsoft GI Josh is moderating from home, so the ban hammer is here. He's stay. the law. He is the <laughs> I am the law. Yeah. Um, do, 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 do. The New York resident can drive 12 hours down to Virginia and visit our store. It's not that bad, to be honest. No, and the hotels around there are very reasonable, and Battle Hack's just an extra hour down the road. So and might as well make reasonable. it like a vacation, right? No, 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 no. Um, let's see. Well, actually, now that I mentioned the Caterer Chris giveaway, I might as well move on to the AAC-21. Now, this is a sniper rifle developed by our friends over at Action Army. Um, I personally really liked it immediately upon seeing it and picking it up because um, the Ares MSR, you know, we've been waiting for it to come out. We actually had a couple at our walk-in store uh, opening for uh, the East Coast store. Um, but what's really cool about this is that it looks very similar and it is so much lighter than the MSR. Um, that said, I haven't had the opportunity to be able to take this out to the field and see how it performs. And likewise with the MSR, I don't know, you know, how either of them would perform against each other. I just know that this looks similar and it's a hell of a lot lighter. Um, so just based on those alone, this is really cool. We actually have two of these on pre-order on our website. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, which is Flat Dark Earth, and another one, which is uh, in black. Mm -hmm. uh, from far away, I call this OD, and man, Frank got on my case. Yeah. He's like, are you colorblind? I didn't even say that word correctly. But anyway, um, this is a really cool gun. I really like the fact that it's gas. You're going to be able to cycle rounds really quickly since it is gas. You just slide it right there. Um, now, we shot a video of this today. It doesn't come with the offset sight with the red dot. It does not come with this bipod. Uh, or the scope, um, but I will say this is the setup I'll probably want on it if I was using it. Uh, Tim got the opportunity to go play with this in the back, and it's really cool. You just go right to the red dot and back to the scope. Pretty awesome. Um, I don't know. I just really like how cool this gun makes me look. I think we'll get one of these. One of these offset sights? Yeah. No, that's pretty Even sweet. though I have a red dot and ready on my AR-15. Yeah. So I have two. I can just... If this one die, I can just... You know. <laughs> No. I still I still want to do the predator setup with lasers. Like get three lasers on my submachine gun. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, who who's my bitch? <laughs> so Oh man, this isn't acceptable in the Milsim lifestyle. What isn't acceptable? Oh well. 
How much is it? <laughs> Bad Luck Bob bought a Kindle and got a paper cut. That's, for, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Because <laughs> a Kindle's a... Yeah, I, don't, I yeah. don't know what a Kindle is. Yeah. It's like the, the cheaper version of the iPad, right? Uh, sure. I think you can only use a Kindle to, like, read. Books, right? Yeah. But the Kindle Fire has the, uh, I think, has the video and web capability or something. Hmm. I don't know. I'm too old for technologies. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, someone mentioned uh, Chris taking away the licensing rights from KWA. I did see that online. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very unfortunate. It was very unfortunate. That was definitely a big surprise. I mean, that was quite a shock for us to uh, hear about. And that's that's another reason why you know having a Chris is going to be very important. It's probably going to be one of the most one of the rarest airsoft guns in the airsoft world. I mean, I remember when I, after I first got to airsoft and I was really interested in getting a specific gun. It was this gas shotgun, and the person in the store was like, "Bob, did you?" Did you place a pre-order? Did you have one in order? I was like, no. They're like, well, I'm really sorry, man. They're all sold, and I don't think they're ever going to be made made again. Like some of the some of the runs on these guns, they'll they'll do them like one or two or three times, and they can't afford to do another run because you know you got to sell all your products. Mm -hmm. So, so you know you may once these are all gone, you you may never see one on a retail store shelf again. So if you want one, now's the time. Can we keep one for our display? I don't know. Yeah. It'd be nice to have one in an airsoft museum. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, the Knights, the Knights Armament uh, light machine gun, they actually kept the first model. It was serial number. It goes in their firearm museum. That's, that's pretty, what we do. Pretty legit. Mm -hmm. Too legit. Too quit. Uh, when is G&G &G releasing the Scar H? We do not know unless you happen to have some information. Um, yeah, as soon as we find out, believe me, we'll, we'll be telling you guys. You know, we get really excited when we get this information because we can share it with you guys. So, yeah, as soon as we find out, we will tell you. Do, 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 and do. GI opened a new store in NorCal with awesome prices. Well, you can drive six hours down to the SoCal store. It's better from New York to Virginia. Right? What? Some guy asked, can we open a NorCal store? Um, possibly. Only six hours down. That's true. It is only six hours down. Yeah. But uh, I will say, like, we, you know, Possibly maybe having a Tim vs. Bob up there. It's really not set in stone, so uh, we'll see. We're I honestly haven't airsoft as much in NorCal as I really should. Uh, I've always wanted to go up to Fort Ord. Um, I've heard a game pod in Northern California, which looks pretty sweet. And then is it CQB cities up there? Mm. Uh, I have no idea. Okay. The only place I like in NorCal is the, not San Francisco overall, but the Chinatown in San Francisco. They have awesome like Chinese food there. It reminds me of my childhood. I believe that is the, because you grew up in China, yeah. uh, I believe that is the biggest Chinatown outside of China in the world. Sure, I have no idea. But no, I think that, that Chinatown in San Francisco has more, um, not Chinese, I think Chinese nationals, Chinese expatriates, something, more Chinese nationals living in a Chinatown than any other Chinatown all over the world. Oh, I have no idea, but all I know is that you can have a second generation or th even third generation um, Chinese American that can't speak English. America. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's definitely a... The food is definitely good, I would say that. That's the spirit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, CQB City uh, looks pretty awesome. I've seen a lot of uh, I know some Junkies videos. They're pretty sweet. So I definitely want to go there. <laughs> Diane Feinstein lives there. That is a political comment. Josh, please, de please delete that. You know but what? it's funny, though. I'll give it to you. I really wanted to say something about her, but since we can't make political comments, I yeah. won't. You know, like, you know when you go, have you ever been to Washington, D.C.? No. I, it's on my bucket list. Oh, okay. Well, I've been there twice on school trips, like middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. And each time, we went there and we got to meet with all of our different congressional representatives, but the only person who didn't make time to see school children Golden State. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Twice. Anyway, that's just me being bitter. Um, do, 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 What's your favorite monster? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, not you. Like. Yeah. What's your favorite monster, Bob? Um, dragons. I like sharks. I think he meant this. Um, oh. My mom just gave me a case of this. This is Monster Rehab. It's tea, lemonade, and energy. Uh, they just came out with one that's green tea and energy. That's delicious. That's what I'm about to say. It's delicious. I like the purple one, the gray. Yeah. Yeah, that's tasty too. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, West Coast, East Coast, how about Midwest? Bob, answer question. Um, 
Don't know anything about, about a storm in the Midwest. Uh, I'm really hoping that we can go airsoft in the Midwest as well. Uh, when Tim and I stormed the Midwest, we had a really fun time. And we would very much like to see our friends over at Airsoft HD, all the Pankratz family. Uh, they're great folks, and honestly, the Midwest is a great place. I felt right at home. Is Texas considered Midwest? No. No, sorry. Sorry, guys. Kind of geography is not my thing. Criminal justice. Um, do, 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 do. What is your favorite role for Operation Line Clause Military Simulation Series? I'm going to field that one to you first. Um, you know me. I, you know, you only look once, so scout. Bold maneuver. Uh, now, I, I don't know if scout is a class at Operation Line Clause. I have no idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I believe it's, you know, uh, saw, mm -hmm. like saw gunner, rifleman, and sniper. And then there's, like, you know, command, like, you know, sergeant, platoon commander, company commander. Rifleman then, because I can do all those macro stuff that is really helping yourself. I assumed you'd say rifleman. And sadly enough, I'm going to have to agree with you. I, I personally like rifleman the best for line claws just because it gives you the greatest flexibility in how you want to play. Um, I have tried sniping at some of those operations, and it can get a little frustrating not having the firepower you want where you want it when you need it. Uh, but I will say, sniping is amazing, and it is very tough, but when you get that kill, it is awesome. If they call it, because sometimes people like they get hit. Some that, that does happen at most airsoft games. Actually, we didn't have too many problems at Tim versus Bob because everyone was there to have fun. But um, well, it's Virginia. People are more us over there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, they're nicer. So in general. Well, we don't want to alienate our SoCal crowd here. I take that back. Maybe. No, it's okay. I I will say I did notice. Uh, just you know, it's like the the way people said things like "sir," "ma'am," like. Everyone was very respectful. Yeah. yeah. So it's just it's different than what we're used to.